Welcome back. The Chalky Milk Gang Podcaster is back better than ever. Season three, episode 20. We've reached that milestone and we're not really going to stop the seasons anytime soon. So we're just going to keep it going. Episode 38 overall. Uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow us on Spotify and Apple Music, whatever, whatever's going on. But crazy episode today. We're talking about what it's like to be a cadet in the Air Force, what it's like to go to school there. And what a, what a great special guest we have. We have Scott Adler. Our guy, how you doing, man? I'm pretty good, hanging in there. How about you? Staying alive, absolutely. Happy to have you here. We also got our uh, usual trio here. We got me, Will, and Tyler, and we also got Scott. So you know, with this addition, I bet he's a chocolate milk he would like to review. So what do you got? All right, so uh, got the classic Nest Quick. I think it's seen Solid. a couple episodes here. Um, it's a common one. So yeah, yeah, I guess. It's a Try good beginner will rating. I, feel, I agree. I, I agree. agree. Well, yeah, it's a good one. It's also it's good to review all the time because it's everywhere. So it's literally everywhere, mm. even in Colorado. Yeah, even in Colorado. So I'm gonna be honest. I'm a big Nesquik fan. Um, probably because you know it says right here on the bottle 37 grams of sugar. I think that's a pretty high sugar content for yeah. chocolate milk. I'm not an expert, but um, I think it's delicious. I'll give it a solid. 8.3 out of 10. Yep, Solid rating. I respect that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No rookie score. It's what we like to see. What was it? You, I you, got you, the, you're uh, one of the good guests. You're one of the good guests. Oh, guess. I appreciate it. It's no rookie honor. score. Yeah, I love that. You know, to counter Scott's uh, regular Nesquik, we got the powder. I've been seeing a lot of people, a lot of TikToks where they got like that animated lady voice and they're like, scoop and powder into the chocolate milk so i had milk to try it go away i Pop use some regular for the boys chalky for the boys i use some regular milk they got from cumberland farms uh this is provided by the uh bunny here his name is powder is that not actually his name but we're gonna call him powder and this is what we got uh it said to do eight ounces of milk and then two teaspoons but i realized that just tastes like milk so i added another but we're just gonna dive in it looks like kind of messed up though maybe it's the glass i don't know it looks kind of dank yeah it's kind of capping right now looks a little dark at the bottom you might need to you know give it a good stir oh true true did yeah. you not I stir it i did stir it oh okay. i guess i'm gonna start <laughs> while chemo reviews i'm gonna make mine i figured i'm also using chocolate milk powder Oh. This is my friend Miles's, so I figured I got to represent the crew. Um, Somebody asked you to review a chalky milk. You have to review it. Right? He didn't ask me, but I, I didn't have any, and I was like, you know, it's good to show my uh, whatever, because I got this, but they gave me normal milk instead, so I panicked. Ready? Right? It's got a nice mm. little pour. Yeah, Woo! I give this. Look at that go. skill. I give this a six a eight. Pour. I'd rather have the regular Nesquik, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. Tyler, if you have a milk, you should mm. go. While I make this, yes. So I have O Organics uh, low fat chocolate, reduced fat chocolate milk. I actually don't think we've had this on before. I, I maybe I'm not 100 percent sure. Okay. I may have reviewed this before. I may not have. You never know. Um, but we're gonna give it a shot here. Uh, I don't know. I'm excited. It looks like though the only thing that concerns me is that if you read, mm, if you read right here, you probably can't. But it says best used by May 2021. That does not sound. That does not sound like something that you put milk in. You know what I mean? Milk is, is a normal fire, and this is not going to expire. So I, I like I can't see the cup when you're pouring it. So like you're going in all these different directions with the pour. I'm like, how are you not spilling it? That's all. Awesome. No, you just <laughs> aim for the cup. Like oh, whatever. But we'll see what it's like. I'm excited to try. Is this a standard dairy milk or is it like some weird? No, there's no weird things to it. It's just milk is supposed to expire and the fact that this doesn't. Yeah. Just, but with That's that like said, a, it's not that bad. Yeah. It's not that bad. It kind of tastes like Nesquik. Like, I don't know. You can. Hmm. Yeah, it's not. It's not that bad. I'm, I'm pretty critical when it comes to chocolate milk. I like to have a a really solid flavor that tastes natural. And even though the flavor is really good and like, like Scott noted, like it's like really sugary and stuff, which I also am like here for, but 
I don't know. Quote from last episode is I'm a whore for sugar. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Wild. But I can't get on board with this flavor. I'm too critical. We're we're in too deep now. We've been doing 38 episodes. I'm I'm too critical of the chocolate milk. It's got to have a good flavor. This doesn't have it. Still good though. I'm still gonna give it a seven six. But I, it, it's it's got to do better. 38 episodes, 38 servings. Exactly. So serving per episode. Um, I'm like struggling to make this not just taste like weird milk because I feel like I don't want to use too much powder, but I keep on adding a little bit more. Use the powder. Just use the whole. Here's my question for you guys: Are you ever afraid that you know, with all these chocolate milk reviews that you're doing all the time, like Tyler said, he's critical now. Are you afraid that you're going to get burnt out? Are you going to ruin the chocolate milk for yourself? <laughs> no, I think there's a lot of chocolate milks you got to try. And, uh, um, you know, yeah. I feel like any any sort of chocolate milk is better than a lot of other drinks. So, yeah. honestly, I kind of look forward to Have you ever to, gotten like, tired of pizza? You know, like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. That's true. Mm-hmm. And then also, I feel like to some level, um, we're a bit, we, we may be chocolate milk snobs because, like, I'll have like a Nesquik and be like, it's good, but like I expect better. It's like it's not a promised land. Yeah. No, like we have high standards now. Right. Yeah. And it's you know. Um, all right, I'm just gonna go in with this. I put like <laughs> three spoonfuls. There you go. I definitely look forward though, like just coming on this right. once a week, just for the opportunity to have chocolate milk. Like mm. it's 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 a good refresher. Yeah. Nice um, excuse to drink some yeah, delicious exactly. chocolate to indulge. milk. Mm. But this tastes exactly like a lot of other just normal chocolate milks. It's like not great. It's like fine. Um, I don't know. Mm. Mm. Okay. It tastes like um, just like exactly what you'd expect powdered chocolate milk to taste like. That's all I can say. It tastes exactly like that. So I'm going to give it like a six zero. Because hypothetically, if you use like whole fat milk, it would probably be better. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, it's Ovaltine chocolate and malt. I'm not really sure what that thing adds to it, but that's what it says. I mean, I mean it has gluten in it. I know I typically can't have like malt beverages, so. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Well, I mean, yeah. I think the, the moral of the story is it may yeah, contain wheat. If you wanna if you wanna be famous on TikTok, get some powder. But if not, if you wanna actually drink chocolate milk like us, not yeah. Facts. Powder's gotta be like a last resort. I gotta try the syrup though. I feel like the syrup Ooh. would be interesting. Yeah, the syrup is pretty. It's it's a classic. I don't know if you can say it's like amazing, but it is pretty good. Yeah, it's, I've always been a syrup uh, fan. I think yeah, it blends syrup. well with the milk, and you can you know choose like you know like we said, pour for sugar. I think you can uh you can choose how much sugar you got in there. You know, you can really up absolutely. The ante. I think you're totally right. Um, but anyway. If we're going to move on now, uh, as much as we love chocolate milk, we're here to talk about a little more uh, about the Air Force Academy because we all go to normal college. Like specifically me. Scott's, um, his experiences there and what, what he's noticed. Yeah. Scott goes to the Air Force. He's from our hometown back in uh, the state of Connecticut. And, you know, he's just living life. He's the only, uh, he's the only person from our class that uh, went to one of the five academies so there's a is lot of props true? to him I, yeah i think that's so. true yeah um he has a lot of play date manners that he likes to share and just <laughs> he's a great guy so yeah what's it like out there what's it like um well you know overall a lot of times you know it can be pretty annoying tough here for various reasons but you know if you just keep your eye on the prize you remind you know remind yourself why you came here all that good stuff then it'll be just fine. You know, there's a lot of great people, like-minded people. There's a lot of awesome opportunities, um, you know, great stories to tell, all that kind of thing. So, yeah. So I have a question. I I did a talking point, if you will. So for us at normal colleges, you know, typical week looks like, you know, we wake up whenever we have class, we go to classes, we do some homework, and then we might have like a test here or there. That's kind of like a standard. Oh, and then we do like extracurricular clubs. What is a That's standard bad, week yeah. at an academy or what is it? Yeah, what's a, a standard week look like for you? Like, does it differ a lot? So for an upperclassman at the academy, it's not going to differ all that much. I mean, when we go to class, you know, we do it in uniform. Um, classes run anywhere from 7.30 to 
seven thirty in the morning to like three forty five in the afternoon. So might be waking up a little earlier than your average college student. Um, we generally have like a room inspection type of deal. So like we're supposed to have our door open from nine thirty a.m. to around twelve every day, um, and then one day a week people from another one of the squadrons will come in and like grade your room, make sure everything's looking good. Um, but for the freshmen, they have like all kinds of training events. So they'll have like trainings after school, like right after class. Um, they'll have what's called MCQ, which is like a 7.15 to 7.50 at night thing. A lot of nights also. Um, that'll be less physical training and more of like a like learning type of thing, um, like a discussion about some kind of thing. And so like a lot of upperclassmen will try to go to some of those things. Um, you know, some won't, some are more involved on like sports teams. You know, we have D1 sports and stuff. So there's definitely like a cultural difference there as well. Yeah. Yeah. About those sports teams, I know the uh, Army Navy game is pretty big. Do you, do you guys at Air Force have something similar? Yeah. Well, you know, this is a great talking point for me because, you know, Air Force football doesn't get enough love. You know, everyone's always talking good, about the honestly. Army Navy game. Well, so there's a thing called the Commander in Chief's Trophy, right? It's a three-way like trophy tournament each year between Army, Navy, and Air Force. And Air Force actually has the most Commander in Chief trophy wins. We're in the lead right now. We've got like 21 or 22, I think. Navy's in second with like 15 or 16, and Army's got like eight or nine. So you know, historically, since all three academies have been around, obviously, we're the, the youngest of the three academies. Um, you know, our football team has traditionally been the best. So, you know, give us some more love. Army, Navy games, great and all, but, you know, little Air Force, Army football, Air Force, Navy football, you can't go wrong. Um, yeah, do you high. think the Space Force has a chance of winning? <laughs> <laughs> so, actually, this is, this is a great, great point to bring up because uh, – Starting with the class of 2020, we actually graduated, I think, like, 70-something cadets who, like, went into the Space Force oh, out of the no academy. Way. It's a real wow. thing now. It, wow. It's not a joke anymore. It's it's a thing. It's stood up. It's up and running. They're doing real stuff. So, yeah. That is wild. <laughs> That's far. That's yeah. Crazy, right? <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty crazy and unprecedented. But, yeah, mm -hmm. so people – if you come to the Air Force Academy, you can go into either the Air Force or the Space Force. Kind of like if you go to Navy, you can either go into the Navy or the Marine Corps. So same kind of deal there. Hmm. The Space yeah. Force, is that like, what? I never understood what exactly that was because NASA is still existing. So Space Force is like you're preparing to fight monsters. <laughs> well, not exactly. You got to so. defend from the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> Have you not seen Predator before? Are you kidding? You're right, right. You're right. <laughs> it's a real threat but anyway you know nasa is more about like research and exploration and that type of thing um whereas the space force is more about you know these are all things that had already existed in the military like within the air force and the mostly the air force but you know army and navy also um like gps type satellites communication satellites those types of things uh -huh. there's a lot of satellites that are used for military communications and that type of thing military applications and if anything were to happen to those satellites, we would be in big trouble because, you know, like we wouldn't be able to get planes or ships where they're supposed to go or like guidance systems for weapons, you know, that are based off of satellites would all be in danger. So the Space Force is basically just in charge of like managing all of those satellites, making sure everything looks good, launching new satellites for military application purposes, that type of thing. So there's not, you know, like people flying around in space with guns just yet but you know yeah i was gonna say maybe if, ever, if you've ever seen the documentary star wars then you'll understand why we have the space force exactly no, 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 no. <laughs> no but that to be fair that actually does see like that does seem like it has a legitimate application i can get why people would actually need a space force in that you explained it really well um right yeah it was i just wanted to i, I want to go back to a little bit more about like you know, the daily life type of stuff. Like, I don't know, what was it? It seems like a lot of work when you explain it that way. You know, you have like all these training events, you have to get up early for classes, you get your like room inspected. I mean, I don't know, do you guys hang out ever? <laughs> you ever like just chill and like read a book or something <laughs> or like hang out with friends? Yeah, so uh, most weekends are generally 
pretty open. We had like a big room inspection last weekend, which is it's like a little more high threat than just the during the week ones. We'll have those like once or twice a semester. Um, but on the weekends, you know, you generally have time to yourself. And depending on what class year you are, you have like more weekend passes. So now that I'm a junior, I can pretty much leave every day on the weekend. Um, so being in Colorado, I go ski a lot, um, mm. which is awesome that they're letting us do that because they weren't at first with COVID stuff, but the, like they did some research, pulled some data, decided that it's okay to let us go ski and that they're not increasing risk really. So yeah, I've been going and skiing almost every weekend. Um, you know, growing up in the Northeast, skiing, it's good, you know, Vermont's fun, but it's, it's a whole different level out here. So yeah, I'm just real happy that I can take advantage of that. Where have you skied over there? Um, like since you've been so there? generally, well, the three places I've been to are Vail, Breckenridge and Keystone. Um, I'd say Vail is probably my favorite. Breck is always just crazy busy, massive mm. lines. Um, Vail, I feel like is probably as busy or have, might even have more people but it's so spread out it's like a massive mountain so that's definitely my favorite place to go highly yeah. recommend if you ever go out to Colorado yeah it's far I've been to Beaver Creek which is right next to Vail I think we may yeah, have right stayed at like a Vail hotel I just went to Beaver Creek instead I don't know right. why but um yeah both are good but that that's exciting I don't know like my dad just loves skiing out west so this must be heaven yeah it's so awesome and the other huge thing is uh because we're like military we get the season pass the epic pass for like 130 dollars nice. a season oh there you go yeah and so you can go to all those resorts <laughs> i named and a bunch more and it's like you break even after one day of skiing so yeah that's insane very fortunate <laughs> Oh like that's the God. that's as much as like yeah just one ski day typically which is like a regular ticket so that's impressive yeah. i mean i'm way too broke to like actually you know have to <laughs> you know pay the usual daily rate so huge yeah that's that's incredible and then like i mean like obviously like colorado skiing is amazing what i always tell um, my friends in the northeast is that if you've ever done a black diamond on the northeast it's the equivalent to like a blue uh out in like colorado it's it's just a lot more competitive and fun and stuff but i mean right. i'm sure that's like a great way to relax after room inspection five days or not five days a week but like you know like having you know kind of the on-campus presence being a little more weighing than the rest of us um right what's the per wait the other thing i wanted to ask about what's the percentage of girls to guys at the air force because i know that's kind of tough <laughs> Yeah, uh, I don't know the exact number, but it's right around 25% female. Yeah. More than so, I thought. Yeah, honestly, yeah. yeah. I thought it'd be like I high. thought you were going to say like 10%. <laughs> no, it's, it's definitely higher than people think, but, you know, it's still pretty low. So, uh, you know, it can be a struggle sometimes dating prospects and such. Bowling mm, with such. the boys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I haven't really mentioned cool. it before, but I'm just, I feel like when people think about going to the academy, the biggest thing they think of is like all the physical training. So is that something that like you do the same structure of like, you have a class, like you have like the physical training class or is it more intensive? Um, well, so there's like a couple like types of uh, like PE classes that involve that stuff, but mainly it'll you'll encounter that kind of stuff like during basic training before your freshman year um or like training after school like I talked about before a little bit during your freshman year um it's actually been a big point of controversy lately um they've been like cutting back on the amount of like physical training that the freshmen do and have been replacing it with like other kinds of training um so you know I won't give my opinion on that but you know it's it's definitely a point of controversy it's a big interesting cultural thing that's going on here but as far as those PE classes, I feel like you guys will find this interesting. So freshman year, uh, everyone has to take a boxing class. Ooh. Um, yeah. And so they basically want you to learn how to like hurt another person and like how to like get punched in the face and not just shut down and freak out. Um, there's like swimming classes that we have to take, like a water survival class. Um, and right now I'm in a class called combatives, which is kind of like wrestling in a way um 
it's all about like it's more like ground based fighting whereas you know boxing is like throwing punches so that's been very interesting i have an exam tomorrow it's called the hour of power it's an hour long like round robin fight thing where you just go around the same group of four guys over and over again like wrestling each other getting graded Sounds... on your stuff that's crazy y'all still have gym class yeah yeah <laughs> for some reason i don't know I, I guess they decided that there's not too much COVID risk associated with <laughs> doing that <laughs> class, but you know, it beats me. We're doing it. <laughs> Basically, you could beat the shit out of us. <laughs> uh, I'd like to think so. <laughs> with my advanced knowledge. Mm. Yeah, you can. That's, that's terrifying. What is it? Oh my god. I mean, hey, good for you. At least yeah, you get like some, because like that's something that we would never take here. Like that's like a, right. that's got to be like a fun class. I mean, I don't know. Tell me, tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like if I was in that at BU, I would enjoy the hell out of that. Yeah, it's definitely pretty fun. I think going into it, I was kind of like, oh, this is such a drag. I have to wake up early. I'm like, mm. worry about like beating the crap out of <laughs> But like, it's kind of, it's a good time. It's interesting to like learn the techniques, kind of just like mess around with the guys in your little cohort. Mm-hmm. And also, I feel like, um, you know, a normal college student, they have like ways of sort of like acting out, whether that be, you know, guys slash girls, depending on what they're interested in, or like parties and stuff. But you at the academy, like those types of things are much more limited. So like having those fighting classes must be nice to kind of like get out all that angsty energy. Right. Yeah. Get out, get all that pent up energy. Mm-hmm. Fight away the yeah. pain. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. What I mean, what other types of cool stuff do you guys do? I mean, clearly it's not just what was it? Because you got to learn how to be like a fighter and stuff. Oh, you guys, haven't you been? Have you you gun? You've handled guns and stuff. You ever shot a gun, Scott? Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, go right so, to the point. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you you shoot guns. You know, unfortunately, we're not West Point, so you only shoot guns like two times basically while you're at the academy. If you're at West Point, you they shoot like all the time, but we shot um, like M4s, like essentially an assault rifle during basic. Um, and then during our survival training, you learn how to shoot the Beretta M9, which is like a nine millimeter handgun. Fun, yeah. Fun. That's how yeah, it is. Su- yeah. Surprisingly, uh, the handgun, I hadn't shot before I came to the academy, um, which is pretty rare. But the handgun is much harder to shoot, which is kind of surprising. You would think that you know, the rifle would be harder, but, you know, there's a lot more stability, like resting it on your shoulder and all that. The mm-hmm. pistol, you're like holding it way out in front of you and it can be like really hard to get your shots on target. Was the kickback like crazy? Cause like, that's like a thing no. and like, no, okay. <laughs> it wasn't so bad. It's just a nine millimeter, but yeah, if you get like the oh, right kind of handgun, it can definitely be brutal from, I, I haven't shot anything with crazy kick before but they're definitely out there damn wait so then if they're if they're shooting like more guns than you and stuff what do you guys do instead i mean i don't know the air force doesn't really need to shoot guns but i assume y'all do other stuff right so we have you jump out of a plane scott yes first of all i have i have jumped out of a plane um super cliche but this is like a huge selling point everyone's always like the air force academy is like the only place where your first skydive ever is a solo skydive. Um, oh, and not only terrifying. that, but you basically get terrifying. like, yeah, you basically get like two to three days of ground training, maybe before they like throw you out the door. So it's kind of crazy. You just gotta, you know, you just gotta Deleting do Deleting out the bad ones. Yeah. <laughs> <Literally>. I mean, <laughs> they're not going to make it. They might as well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The one thing they have this fail safe, um, like your reserve will pull automatically if you get within like, I think like a thousand feet of the ground or something. So oh, okay. oh, good. you at least have that. They're not going to intentionally. Mind. Yeah. Does that even work? Whatever. We don't have to get into that. I, I have no idea. Science. How it works. I wish I did. But I remember I wasn't even that scared, like leading up to it. Um, and then once we got on the plane and we started taking off. I'm like, you know, I had my shoe on, I had my helmet on, my goggles and everything. I'm like looking around. I was like, oh God, it's happened. And then the real moment of reckoning was when like the first person in my like jump load jumped out. 
because you know i'd obviously never seen a person fall out of a plane at four thousand feet above the ground in person before and i knew the guy too so like it was just like surreal like it almost seemed like an illusion or something like i was dreaming like watching james chase fall out of a plane <laughs> like get sucked out the window and i was like oh my god like i'm about to do that Dude, yeah. I wanna and how, how'd it feel um i would say like from that moment that i was just talking about to like standing outside of the door like looking over the plane wing like that was all just nerve-wracking as heck and then like as soon as you let go at least for me it was like i don't know how to explain it it was very blissful you're just kind of like floating there Huh. You're alone with your thoughts in the sky, flying around. It's like, it's, it's a very cathartic experience. And then, you just know, vibing. you pull the parachute <laughs> just get vibes. yanked up. Just vibes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely you touched, a good time. You touched about this a little earlier, like what you guys do, like on the weekends. But like, while you're like on campus, like, obviously there's not really any parties. So like, what's the social life sort of like? Yeah. So it's a lot of like, hanging out in each other's rooms watching movies we actually have like a bowling alley on base kind of oh that's, um, that's cool. sick yes that's pretty cool two hands We've got like a yeah, food two court hands. thing yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the two hand bowling technique never fails so, um, yeah but yeah we've got like a little food court with like a dominoes so people will go there but for the most part everyone's like jonesing to get out of here on the weekends they just you know you find some friends you go ski you like go out to restaurants do whatever mm -hmm. yeah. i've got to say you're rocking the military haircut i think yeah. it looks great for you i think it works too i kind of i kind of like it i think it looks okay i don't know if i, I mean, would have this haircut if i wasn't here but you know i feel like all of us well chima's most recent haircut was a bit of a conundrum <laughs> but like tyler and i kind of get that Todd. haircut anyway yeah, I feel like, you know, you guys just have, like, slightly longer versions of the same thing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. probably yeah, have something like that. I mean, I don't know. What is it? The military – military look is, like, a thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, people, like – people specifically, like, go for it even when they're, like, not in there. But, like, right. I don't know. I feel like I, it's, it's, like, when everybody all does it together, it doesn't make it as effective. Sorry, buddy. Like we're we we love it here now, but I'm sure when it's literally everyone, it's not. You're not oh, as yeah. like, yeah, I like because oh, yeah. like, it's like everyone else. Oh, yeah. Exactly. No, every single dude here, like I can't tell my friends apart unless I can see their face. Like you know, if I'm like behind <laughs> them or like they're really far away, like everyone has this haircut more or less. So like it's kind of funny. You know, can be hard to tell, and it's also really annoying because sometimes you like go out somewhere in town, you like go to a restaurant or like you know. I was at like an auto parts store the other day and like the, they'll be like, Oh, military discount. And I'm just like, Oh, like I, I really, I look like it. Don't I? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you have a hard time blending in sometimes like you just want to go off on the weekends and be a normal person, but you know, you still got this attached to your head. So <laughs> sure hey, at least you get a discount. Yeah. yeah that's right. Cool. Discounts are nice. I always feel bad. The ski helmet is for yeah <laughs> got a yeah. cover of London mm. but I always feel bad sometimes like with these discounts because you know like for the most part at least right now like I'm just a college kid you know what I mean like oh, yeah, not doing not anything too kid. crazy and like there's always like the thank you for your service type people and you know it's appreciated and all that but it's like you know save save it for someone else is kind of my thing at least for now like yeah you don't yeah. feel like you've like earned it exactly I don't feel like I'm living up to the thank you for your service and the discount yet. Mm -hmm. well, Maybe one day I'll live up to it. Soon. Yeah. What's your like plans for like after you leave the Air Force? Like what what do you want to do after that? That was after my question the Air too. Force. Yeah. Um. I don't do you, really like send you to do something or like after the academy? You mean? Yeah. Like, like after, after the like academy. I retire from the military. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know, you put in a job preference. Everyone that goes here and graduates serves for like at least five years. Um, if you're going for pilot, which I'm doing, then it's 12 years of service. So I'm sorry, going for pilot? Okay, Scott. All right. Yeah. That's awesome. So we'll see if I get it. I don't want to jinx myself, but yeah. So I'll be putting in for pilot as my first choice. Um, and if I get it, 
I'll go to pilot training after graduation, which is like a two year long process. Um, learn how to fly, get my airframe, and then I'll be flying active duty for at least 10 years. Yeah. That's, so that's if everything goes according Crazy. to plan. If I don't get Damn. pilot, then, you know, I'll still I have guaranteed employment after graduation. So that's great. That's um, the key. Yeah. Still be serving my country and all that jazz. Mm. So, yeah, that's it'll sure. all work out. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's you got so a 10 year cool. plan. So that's dope. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's one really interesting thing about coming here is I know, like, for you guys, you're probably starting to stress out a little bit about, like, you know, you're going to graduate and you got to, like, apply for all kinds of jobs and then if not then you like got to live with your parents for a little bit so you can figure something out and for us that's like a huge thing like you've got guaranteed employment guaranteed income given you know you're never going to get like super rich doing it but it's it's a guarantee so at least from that perspective it's a great opportunity yeah especially like where like the economy is today like it's so hard to get jobs like it's kind of nice having that sort of guarantee for you right Mm-hmm. yeah i don't know do you have any like um i don't know like what's your what are some of your best experiences while you've been there because i'm sure you have some pretty freaking awesome stories right yeah so we already went over a jump that's usually the you know big story that i have to tell mm-hmm. everyone mm-hmm. Um, that's the iconic one yeah i actually took this powered flight class this year where you kind of start learning how to fly a plane um and I had this crazy instructor pilot because I had never flown a plane before I took this class. Um, so it's just like a single propeller, two seater plane, little plane, like 80 horsepower engine. And we're just like flying around out on the edge of Colorado Springs, like over all these empty fields kind of thing. Um, and she looks at me and she's like, all right, we're going to do uh, touch and go landings at the Colorado Springs airport. So that's essentially you come in, you touch your landing gear to the ground you keep your speed up and then you take off again. So it's just like, you know, a good way to practice touching down, you go around and do it a couple of times. But like I said, this was my first time flying a plane, like 30 minutes into my first flight. And my instructor pilot's telling me that like, I'm about to like <laughs> try to land this thing. I was just like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah, we'll be fine. Don't worry. So we're, <laughs> we're going to the airport. Um, I'm on my approach here. I'm coming in for landing. Um, if you've ever flown on a plane before, you probably know that like right before you touch down, you kind of feel the nose come up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. And so what that is, is you have like a controlled stall almost, and then you gently fall down onto the runway. Um, so, you know, she told me to flare, it's time to flare, point the nose up a little bit. And, you know, like I said, like 30 minutes, an hour into my first time flying a plane, I like yanked back on the stick way too hard. We were like 80 feet above the runway with like no speed because we had like slowed down to touch down so like we almost stalled like right above the runway and it would have been really bad and she just screamed my controls and threw the throttle up and pointed the nose back down yeah so that was very interesting experience i almost almost got us killed but it's kind of hard to be like i got it (laughs) no she's a serious pilot she has like thousands of hours in the c-17 which is like a big high performance cargo plane yeah Mm -hmm. she's been deployed to afghanistan and all that so like she she is a good Mm -hmm. pilot to say the least (laughs) Mm -hmm. that begs the question have you successfully done the touch and go since then yes so we had four flights and by the last flight i successfully did a couple of touch and goes so yeah is that like a cool is that like a hard maneuver like was it weird that you did it like so soon um I would say not to do my own horn. It's slightly above average for my, my, you know, amount of time flying the plane. Um, but I, it's basically like a beginner way to like get introduced to like, you know, the concepts of takeoff and landing. And it's really easy because you can just keep on passing around the same airport and do it over and over again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Damn. Well, that's hella impressive. Congratulations so impressive. on yes, thank not you, getting thank yourself you. killed on <laughs> your first time flying. <laughs> so that I'm here on Chalky Milk Gang. To You're tell probably me. alive, man. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's yeah. a lot of hard work being alive. Mm-hmm. Well, damn. 
uh, it sounds like if I want to go fly planes, shoot guns, and not date anybody, I should go to the Air Force, huh? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's the takeaway. That's the best three-point summary of this place I've ever heard. <laughs> yeah. You can also ski there, too, so there's that. Yeah, you can ski. That's big. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, uh, we definitely appreciate having you um, on, Scott. We know it's not the same time as it is in Colorado as it's here, so I'm glad we can make this work. Um, and yeah, don't yeah, uh, great don't seeing die. you. Yeah, but, great yeah, to see you, see you guys being, too. Glad you do. I hope well. you get your pilot. Okay, well, we're all talking at the same time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hope you get to be a pilot. Uh, good luck. Um, yes, thank you. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a pleasure to be here. I'm gonna finish up my nest quick um, there you go yeah Love that. i appreciate being on yeah i hope life is good for you guys at school <laughs> just stay yeah, alive yeah we're just gonna do what we can do um yeah. but yeah you know scott thank you very much for coming on uh please subscribe if you haven't already we're at 161 so you know this is our full-time job this is our full-time income uh instagram's kind of popping off we appreciate all the people that have been randomly following us lately we're celebrities um so please follow us there more podcasts every wednesday uh some non-podcast content probably won't be coming for a while but maybe in the summer um any other thoughts we're on apple and google Podcasts now too because yeah my roommate said he likes using apple for like you know music and podcasts and stuff and then google Podcasts. i was like yeah why not do that too so we're there yeah Mm -hmm. You can really find us everywhere. So go look us up, Chalky Milk Gang Podcasts. Um, you can't share us around us. everywhere that you we can be shared now, especially the gram and, um, and you pay know, your you taxes. Know. Pay your taxes. You're paying Scott's salary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yes, please. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, that subscribe, April. share, do all that jazz. Um, yeah. Exactly. Um, Chima. Yeah, well, thank you for coming, Scott. And uh, until next time, see ya.